Thanks so much for having me, Brisbane Paleo Group. Leah, thanks so much for the invite. My name is Olivia and I am the owner of Yum Gluten Free. And today we're going to talk about eating out in Brisbane being gluten free. So I'll share a little bit about me and my business and my experiences and I'll give you some tips and some great places to go. So um, Yum Gluten Free is an online resource and we share everything to do with gluten free. So that's going to be recipes, articles, um, any new products that are coming out, cafes and restaurants that are gluten free and especially specializing in celiac disease and celiac disease awareness. Um, anything that is being featured or launched, we want you guys to know about. So anything in the gluten free sphere, we talk about on Yum Gluten Free. I myself am a celiac, so with celiac disease, it's a whole nother level of gluten free. So it's not just um, cutting out the wheat, barley, malt, rye, and oats. It's also being aware of cross contamination. So that's a whole nother conversation that you need to have whenever you're eating out. And it's not just cafes and restaurants, it's friends, family, anytime that you're not preparing your own food. So with Yum, we've got a campaign called Hashtag No Crumbs, Please, and it's all about sharing um, when you find cafes and restaurants that really respect um, cross-contamination and how to safely serve a celiac. You post and then you share with the hashtag No Crumbs, Please, so other people know that they can safely go to this cafe, go to this restaurant, um, and it helps build awareness with those cafes and restaurants as well. We want people to understand that they can prep food um, in their kitchen with, you know, extenuating circumstances. Obviously not. They're doing their homemade pizza bases and things like that there. But for the most part, there's ways to make safe spaces um, and accommodate for everybody. But they just need to be trained. So that's part of our jobs as celiacs is to do that. So um, I was diagnosed with celiac disease nine years ago now and I really and truly wasn't healthy yet until I did a program called Whole30 which a lot of you um, in this group may have heard of and essentially it's just um, restricted paleo so it just cuts out all the um, any replacement sugars as well in addition to your normal grains, sugar, dairy, alcohol um, so it goes a step beyond and I did a lot of gut healing. So fermented foods, um, made my own bone broth and had that religiously put that in everything, which was really helpful. And doing that gut healing. Oh, hi, guys. Sorry. Oh, thanks for the hashtag, Leah. Um, doing that gut healing is really when I started to feel better. So there was a lot that went into that. A lot of stress, obviously, that was damaged that gut. And then just a decade of eating gluten after having celiac disease, so my poor small intestine would have just been ripped apart before I did that. So um, my hot tips are, I've got a bit of a list and I'm super rigorous before I eat out anywhere new or anywhere for the first time um, especially, and then making sure you're careful every other time after that as well. If you have any questions, obviously just shoot them through. Um, number one, if you're going out to a new place, always Hop online, see what the menu is like. Um, it's kind of getting trendy these days not to list dietary requirements. And instead, they might just put on the bottom um, for dietary requirements, please ask your server. So they're kind of like wanting to keep the menu clean, but also letting you know that we do care. Please talk to us. We want to accommodate for you. So I call ahead. I always, always call ahead. Um, it allows you to have the opportunity to speak to someone um, like an authority figure, so hopefully the manager, at a time that the restaurant's not busy. So you can actually have the conversation that you need to have to make sure that you're going to be safe there. Um, and just start with the basics. You know, do you have gluten-free options? Yes. Okay. Do you serve people with celiac disease? Are you aware of cross-contamination? Um, do you fry your gluten-free items in a dedicated gluten-free fryer? Um, that's a huge one, obviously. Are you willing to toast bread on foil, you know, gluten-free bread on foil instead of, um, so it's not touching anything in the toaster if it's a press? Um, there's a lot of things you can go through with them, and oftentimes, if they know and if they're comfortable, they'll straight away say, yep, absolutely, we can accommodate. This is what we do. Um, let's say they've got gluten-free pasta, you know, make sure that they're using clean colanders and not rinsing through 
regular gluten-free or regular pasta colanders. All those things. So have that conversation when the restaurant's busy. Um, don't call during peak times. And then if you're making a booking, I always have them write someone is coming in with celiac disease actually on the booking. I have had some amazing situations when I have asked, I've called ahead, they've written celiac disease on my booking, and then I've actually had times where chefs, they've relayed that to the chef, and a chef has kept an entire vat of oil clean and safe until that party, so we got there. And then I was able to have gluten-free calamari or whatever it was, that is something that was such a trait. And it was all because I called ahead and um, you know had that conversation first and they were able to actually talk to their chef and because it was a great place that was willing to go above and beyond. That's happened three times that they've put things aside so that way I could eat it too when I got there. So always call ahead, it's always super important. Then when you get there, make sure you say, um, I'm celiac, you know, so I'm the one that they need to be looking out for, and hopefully they'll tell your server as well. Sit down. I like to order last, so it's my sort of, I guess, additional safeguard that they're not going to forget about me, hopefully, by the time they write down my order to when they get to the computer. So you want to stay fresh on their mind. So that's maybe like a little bit crazy, but I always ask to go last just so I can make sure I say, this is my order, gluten-free, I have celiac disease, it was mentioned in the booking. So um, I find that helps. So then when the meal comes as well, um, I still make sure, again, if they bring out, if I've got gluten-free pasta, I say, oh, this is, is this the gluten-free order? Um, and they should tell you when they put it down, but if they don't, um, that's always a way. And then, I also take a digestive enzyme called Glutagard. So this is in addition to every single other step. Um, I also take this digestive enzyme. Glutagard actually has an enteric coating. So it goes all the way through your gut into your small intestine. And it lines your small intestine and actually absorbs, I'm um, sorry, it breaks down the gluten protein. Um, if there's any residual gluten that has gotten through. So even amongst all of that, you can't eat a pizza and do it. It has to be only something like cross-contamination. Um, and this is only in situations that you're not preparing your own food. And there's only so many steps you can take. And I already named quite a few of them. So um, I always take it um, every single time I'm eating anything that's not prepared in my own house, um, even if it's family and you trust them. If there's gluten in the house, then it's just safe to take as many safeguards as humanly possible. So I always take Glutagard as well, um, and that has to happen before you eat because it has to be actually um, in your small intestine whenever you're consuming the food. Um, those, are, those are my tips. That's um, a lot of what I do, and there's only so much you can do, so it just helps when you have sort of um, a bit of a system set up. Um, that way you feel like you're in control. And I spent a long time feeling very out of control with eating out. Um, and there were many times that I was repetitive, repet repetitively getting sick. Um, and this was actually before I did the Whole30. And who knows if I was being glutened or if it was because my gut was so badly damaged that there were other foods that I was also sensitive to. I just wasn't aware of it. Um, and I hadn't done any of that healing at all. Um, and that was five years after, well, let's say, yeah, five years after being diagnosed, I still hadn't really learned about gut healing or anything like that. So I was still getting sick. So I went through a period of two full years where I had such severe, it's food anxiety, but it was the fear of getting sick. So I would just be so paranoid about um, something going wrong. Even... If I was in a 100% gluten-free cafe, it was my body's instant reaction to go into that anxiety sort of mentality, and I would already feel sick before I'd even got my mouth. So you know it's mental, but it's still there, and it's still hard to control. So by developing a bit of a system, um, it makes you, well, it does make you feel more comfortable, obviously, because you feel like you're actually taking every single safeguard that you possibly can. But it also gives your brain something else to focus on instead of just this fear. So you know you've done all the right steps, you've talked to the right people, and it really has helped so much. After I did that gut healing, I put some steps in place for myself, um, and just tips that I recommend to everybody, especially calling ahead. 
You just have to call ahead and have that conversation at an off-peak off peak time. That is like the biggest tip I can give. Um, so you can have a really good conversation with someone who knows what they're talking about and has the time for you. Um, and if you go to a place and they don't sound confident or convinced that this is legitimate, go somewhere else. That's what we do. <laughs> I mean, there's a million and one places out there and there are people who really want to serve you and they want you to have a really amazing time and experience. So I really, I'm okay with walking out of a place if I feel like I am not going to be taken care of there and I might get sick. We just won't eat there. So I know that can be a bit tough if you're with other people, but hopefully um, they understand your needs and they're able to accommodate as well. And that's for any dietary restriction. You really, doesn't matter what um, your dietary needs are. If you walk into a place and you're automatically feeling uncomfortable because they're not giving you a confident, accommodating response, then I just recommend going somewhere else and going somewhere that really wants to serve you because there are plenty of places that do. So there are so many options in Brisbane. I absolutely love living in Brisbane because I really do feel like we have, we've got it going on here. There's so many new places that pop up and places that are really jumping on so that way they um, can accommodate for everybody. And we're quite small here, so everyone sort of has to jump on board, which I think is a good thing for us. Um, Asana, obviously. Pete Evans restaurant um, at Capri Hotel is number one. So, so, so good. And obviously feel very, very safe there. They do have some items with gluten. They, have a, um, they do have a regular pizza base. And I think they've got a bun as well, um, a burger bun. So I still make sure I talk about cross-contamination because of those things. Um, but I, I've always felt extremely safe there and very confident. Everyone's very accommodating there. Um, a sauna, um, one of my absolute favorite places is Bird's Nest. They've got one in, hi Zoe, they've got one in West End, and they have one in Fortitude Valley. It's very, very new, and they are almost 100% gluten-free. They have one curry on the menu that has gluten, and that is it. So, pretty awesome. Um, as far as paleo goes, I know they do use soy sauce. But they also use sake for cooking. They have other um, in, um, ingredients as well. So if you're not having soy, um, they've got lots of options. And they are amazing. So it's tapenaki. Is that what it is? Or, yeah, tapenaki. It's, it's on the charcoals, and it's so delicious. It's definitely bird's nest. Saki, which is a chain in Australia, fancy chain, so they've got um, Japanese food as well. Lots and lots of raw fish, extremely accommodating. Um, I'm pretty sure all of their soy sauce is gluten-free, um, or we've never had a problem. They always bring out gluten-free soy sauce, if not. Um, and again, they'll, they're the kind of place that when you walk in, they'll say, you're the celiac that's coming in, so they're all over it. Um, Fishmonger's Wife, uh, which just moved from East Brisbane, and I think now it's in Bulimba, so not too far. They've got a dedicated fryer for um, gluten-free fish. They do baked fish as well. You don't have to have battered. They've got a huge menu, actually, and tons and tons of gluten-free. They are amazing and really lovely owners. Love supporting them. There's um, Lefkos in West End. They have always done a really good job at um, accommodating for my needs, and their Greek food is delicious. It's definitely one of my faves in Brisbane. Um, there's also Tinderbox in James Street. They have gone above and beyond to make sure that everything is contaminant-free. They're very, very careful, um, which I love. Bucci as well on James Street. They are beautiful owners, also so, so, so kind and want to make sure that everybody's accommodated for. They go above and beyond at Bucci. It's Italian, which is always a bit fun as well. And then for cafes, um, I, yeah, Lefkis is the best, isn't it? It's so good. And it's a really good vibe as well. Sorry, um, Leah just commented, I love Left Guys. It's such a good vibe. They do really fun things in there. It's really kind of like just hopping all the time. And they've got a good outdoor space, indoor space. Left Guys in my stand is so good. Um, so as far as cafes goes, Wild Kitchen is obviously paleo. And their food is always so good. I love Wild Kitchen. Definitely check them out if you haven't yet. They're in Tenerife. Um, have to have Nodo. Nodo is amazing. So Nodo used to just be donuts, and now they've got a huge cafe, um, huge menu, 
and that's in Newstead area as well, so not, not far at all. And um, they cater for all sorts of intolerances. They're very, very helpful there, and their food is divine. It's like above and beyond cafe status. Finicky Fresh, gluten-free there in West End. Amazing mother-daughter uh, that own it together, and beautiful food. They are so reliable. They do gorgeous cakes as well, um, and they have an awesome new menu right now. Personal favorite as well is Dovetail on Overend. So that's in Norman Park um, on the south side. Absolutely also amazing owners. It's a couple, and the husband has celiac disease, and he might kill me for telling you this, but he actually cried the first time that his wife made him a gluten-free apple pie because he had not he know he thought he was never going to have that kind of food again and now they have the most incredible cafe with everything that she makes for um on the baked good side is all gluten-free and then they have regular bread and things like that for the breakfast but they're very strict about cross contamination they take everything to the next level if you let them know so good um oh there's milk and co milk and co new farm not even a year old yet. Such an amazing restaurant. We were just there recently, actually, and their food is divine. Their new menu is unreal. And um, they do actually have a note at the bottom of the menu, I'll just say this, that says, um, you know, we do have all allergens here. Um, please tell your server if you have any intolerances or whatever, whatever it is, allergies. Um, and I actually didn't go there for a while because of that, and I was like, oh, if I'm putting on the menu, and it's probably not safe for me to go. And then some people were going, so um, I went, and I was just gonna get a drink if I didn't feel comfortable there. And they were so accommodating. They said, absolutely, we can keep things separate and go to the next level. So yeah, had a great experience there. Um, who, where else was I gonna say? Oh yeah, Thrive, of course, in the city. They're paleo friendly and delicious. And um, there's a lot, actually. Miss Bliss in West End is also amazing. We've got tons and tons of options and always happy to be accommodating. Um, so yeah, Brisbane's so full of great stuff. Um, I'm actually going to put up an article soon that's got my personal list of places that I go and I feel safe when I'm in Brisbane. Um, I've got a couple on the Gold Coast and a couple on the Sunshine Coast. So I will add that um, at some stage and I'll let Leah know so you can hop online and see um, what cafes and restaurants I recommend. But I think that's all for me. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm sure we'll have the link, so if you missed out, um, you can hop online and watch it again later. But I hope that helps. Those are my tips for eating gluten-free and staying celiac safe when in Brisbane. And just in general, lots and lots of ideas for how to manage celiac disease and actually go out, enjoy eating, and not have to worry about what's happening in the background because you've checked all the boxes possible. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, Leah.